Today I'm out in the beautiful west desert of the state of Utah to have a little fun with the Lamatt Revolver. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. Well, I've had a lot of requests to do videos on the Lamatt Revolver. And I did a video already, just sort of a tabletop overview of it. And as I mentioned in that video, this is not my revolver. This was sent to me by a kind viewer on loan, uh, just to do some videos with, and then I will be sending it on back. Uh, it is a very peculiar gun with the 44 caliber revolver barrel and chambers, plus a 20 gauge shotgun underneath. Well, let's go ahead and get it loaded up and have some fun. All right, as I've said in the overview video, the Lamat has nine chambers of 44 caliber and one 20 gauge shotgun barrel. And as I also said, the originals were 42, and then on the shotgun barrel, I've read and seen videos claiming 18 gauge and 16 gauge for the originals, so they, it may have been both, who knows. But they're now 20 gauge and 44. Now, the powder charge I'm going to use, and we'll pull it to half cock, freeze the cylinder just like on a cope. Anyway, the powder charge is going to be 25 grains, and I'm using Triple FG go -X black powder. And for a projectile, I'm using a 451 diameter 44 caliber round ball. And I'm just going to rotate that up to the loading lever. The loading lever you can see is different from a cold. I'm going to pull it this way to ram in that ball. And I want to do this somewhat gently because loading lever feels fragile to me. Now, the gentleman who loaded it to me says it's stronger than it seems, but I just want to make sure I'm not too rough on it. But that seems to be pressed in. And now I will just repeat that all the way around. All right, well, I've now got all the chambers loaded up with powder and ball. Well, at least the ones I'm going to shoot. I've loaded eight so that I can rest the hammer on an empty one. Now, the next thing I want to do is take some of this black powder revolver lube and spread it over the mouths of each chamber. As I've mentioned in other videos, that helps keep things soft in the bore and keep the gun running a little smoother before it gets fouled up. And I will just continue this all the way around. And if you're interested in that lube, I do have it available in four ounce or two ounce containers. Just look in the description below for the link. Now for the percussion caps, I'm going to be using Remington number 10 caps because I know the Pieta nipples like those. And I will just repeat that all the way around. All right, well, the gun is loaded, capped and ready to shoot. And for these first shots, I'll be shooting from the Caldwell pistol arrow rest and the Caldwell stable table so that we can just see what the gun is capable of. 15 yards ahead of me, I have got a round 12 inch steel plate. So let's fire some shots and see what it does. Sure get a lot of shots with a Lamat. All right, let's go have a look at the target. Well, that's a group I can live with. That's not bad for 15 yards with a little revolver like that. Now I want to point out too, one thing that impressed me, I had to just you know take a guess. I wasn't sure if it would shoot high like a Colt. I figured it wouldn't because it has a tall front sight. I was aiming right here. So the group is pretty much hitting right at point of aim. So that's that's good, that's impressive. Well, why don't we load up the shotgun barrel now and we'll see how it patterns on this paper target. Now the powder charge I'll use for the shotgun is going to be 3FG Go-X powder again. 
and I'm going to use 45 grains. May even take more than that, but I'm just uh, experimenting out here. So we'll use 45 and that'll give us a nice boom. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take one of these over powder cards and normally if I shoot a black powder shotgun I like to use one of those cushion wads and it holds in better and it protects the lead from getting too beat up by the powder blast but right now shooting supplies are fairly hard to come by and I'm just going to use this over powder card and the ramrod for the shotgun is contained within the loading lever for the revolver so now I just take the ramrod and press down my card and you see that's going to go right to the end of the rod it wouldn't if I had a cushion wad then I can take that back out and we'll get ready to load the shot all right now I'm just going to do a square load in this shotgun barrel today and what a square load is it means I'm going to use the same amount by volume of shot that I did of powder in fact I'll just dump it in with the same measure and this is just some number eight lead bird shot that I had nothing heavy or anything and then I'll just add over another card and again I would like some wadding and you know cushion wads and it would all hold together better but since I'm just firing one shot I'm really not worried about it falling out of the barrel or anything and it's just an example of the fact that the Lamat can shoot a shotgun load well now I've got that loaded up the next thing to do is put on a cap all right now the way the firing of the shotgun works to put the cap on the shotgun barrel has its own nipple. The revolver nipples are up here, but the shotgun nipple is down here. And when you fire this, what you do is you flick this little lever, and you'll notice that drops this part of the hammer down. So instead of the hammer striking up here, now this piece is going to strike here. Now, I noticed uh, when I was looking over this gun that this nipple is smaller than these. So my Remington number 10 cap doesn't really fit very well but I'm still going to use it I'm not worried about chain fire or anything when the guns only loaded with one shot I'm not loading the revolver and the shotgun at the same time mainly for that reason now as long as this is flicked up there's actually a hole in the underside of the hammer so the hammer can come down and it's not going to discharge that theoretically you could be firing these and then when you run out of those shots you could just go ahead and flick that up and you've got a shot with the shotgun well now that I've got it all loaded up Let's go see how it patterns on that paper. All right, well, that is a very wide spread. I hope you can see that well on the camera, all those little bird shot holes. It even spread all the way over onto the steel. So that shotgun would only be effective at very, very close range, but that's to be expected with only a barrel that long. I'm impressed that it even did as well as it did. Well, why don't we get the gun loaded up one more time and we'll shoot it some more. Oh, no. Oh. Well, it looks like the high fructose gang is back again, folks. Let's load up the Lamat and take care of those carbonated bandits. Now, I'm actually going to stop right there. Now, you might be thinking, but Dustin, what about the other carbonated bandits? Well, they ran off, but don't worry, they'll be back another time. The reason I stopped is because the gun actually chain-fired on me. You may have noticed that that last shot that you saw was a little different from the others. If you're not sure what a chain-fire is, what happens is you fire one chamber, and as it fires, it actually ignites the next one over and causes it to fire too which is obviously you know potentially unsafe because that's going to be coming out the side which means it came out over here now the gun seems to be intact i don't think it damaged anything which is uh lucky uh, if it did it would have been the loading lever but it seems to be all right but like i said that is going to be potentially unsafe so i'm not going to continue to fire this i'm just going to stop uh right there and to be honest, that was one of my concerns. I thought we'd be okay, but I was a little bit of a concern on my mind that we could uh, chain fire with a design like this. It's one of the things I don't like about it. The chambers are very, very close together, and there are two ways that it could happen. A misconception that is that, is that it usually happens from the front, like a spark gets out of one chamber and over to the other that way. 
I don't believe that's what happened here. Those 451 diameter balls, they're obviously smaller than 454, but they're very tight in this gun and they did all shave a ring of lead, so they were sealed. And as you noticed, I use a pretty good amount of lube over them as well. But the other way it can happen, and I think that's what happened here, is it can happen from the rear of the cylinder. Now, when I was putting the caps on, uh, off camera when I was trying out this gun, I tried a number 11 CCI caps, they fell right off. I tried Remington number 11, they fell right off. Uh, but I also had, uh, what were the other ones? The Winchester Magnum number 11s, they fell right off. So I put on the uh, Remington number 10s and those were the ones that stuck on. Now I did notice when I was putting them on, they were not as tight as they are on my uh, Colt model that I have reproductions of. And so I think what happened is a cap came loose as one fired and a spark was allowed to get underneath it. That's what I believe. But either way, uh, not going to fire the gun anymore. And I'm not trying to trash talk the gun. Uh, I, it does have some design issues that I don't like, mostly just some of the quirkiness in the in the features of it, like the way the loading lever is over on this side and you have to cap it over on, on this side. Uh, I don't like the angle uh, of the grip, although some say that that can actually help when shooting the shotgun. So it, it has some quirks I don't like. Um, as far as the safety, that's the only thing, but I think if uh, Pieta could you know, maybe make the nipples match more closely to their other models, since they already changed the caliber and gauge of the Lamat anyway. And then um, I will say, I think this would be a good gun to have in a collection, mainly for display. And then again, if you're gonna shoot it, just make sure that you, maybe you can change the nipples or find the caps that are just really, really tight so you don't have a chain fire. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy taking this look today at the Lamat and the shots that we did get to fire with the revolver and the shotgun. Please don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. And if you look in the description, you'll see where to find me on social media and where you can find great Guns of the West products. Thank you so much for watching.